Hey guys, have you ever wondered how to stream your PS4 gameplays with Streamlab OBS? Well, look no further as this video aims to guide you step by step so you can live stream on your favorite platforms such as YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, or Facebook. And we're starting right now. Alright, so this method that I'm about to present to you is actually the easiest and the best way to stream your PS4 with Streamlab OBS on your PC. Now, one of the main benefits you get by using this method is that it's free, which means no expensive capture card is required. Secondly, by using this method, you will experience no game lag or input lag. This is a guarantee because you will be mainly playing directly from your PS4 while you are streaming on your PC. I will show you exactly how to do that later. And lastly, this method will be simple and easy because after setting everything up, preparing for the next stream will only take a few clicks, which takes usually less than a minute. Now let's move on with the step-by-step -step guide. Now the things you need are as follows, which are Remote Play, Streamlabs OBS, an extra PSN account, and a single controller. I'll go through step by step on each of them for the setup and we'll start with remote play first. Now firstly, you would need to download the official remote play from Sony if you don't have it already. Now what remote play does is it will directly play your PS4 gameplay onto your PC. This is needed for streaming purposes as you will be streaming on your PC with Streamlabs OBS. And don't worry as you will not experience any lag from your PS4 so you can enjoy playing your game lag free. So after downloading and installing it, open up Remote Play and log in with your new PSN account that you had just created. For example, in my case, my main PSN account is The Viperian and I created another PSN account for streaming purposes and logged in to Remote Play with this new account. Now before linking your PS4 to Remote Play, we have to make sure that your PS4 is ready for Remote Play. So let's just jump over to the PS4 and I'll show you which setting you should set up. Alright guys, so we're all the way at the PS4 right now. And there are actually two things you need to set up in your PS4 to prepare for remote play. So the first of all is you have to activate your PS4 as a primary PS4. And you can do that by going all the way to your profile and choosing activate your PS4 as a primary PS4. Now, the second thing you need to do is to actually enable remote play on your PS4. So that's pretty easy, just head all the way down and select remote play connection settings and just hit the check mark on the remote play site. Alright, so before I forget, uh, do remember to log in to your new PSN account by creating a new user. I've already done that and as you can see, I've actually named it as remote play so it's easier for me to recognize but you can name it to whatever you like. Now once that's done, just select the new profile that you've created and now let's head to the PC side and we are actually ready to link your remote play together with your PS4. Alright guys, so now I'm back to my PC. So since that I have remote play already installed, I just double click it. And I'll just head to settings and at the top left here, um, if you have already signed in then great, I'll just do that right now. So uh, remember that I'm signing in with my secondary account which is the streaming account which is the new account that you have just created. So for this case, uh, my PSN account for this one is called the Viper Stream. So it's actually easier for me to remember. So um, the resolution and all, you can just tweak it to how you like. Uh, basically for high, if you have the base PS4, this is the best option for you. Whereas if you have the PS4 Pro, then you can go all the way up to 1080p, which is the best option right here. And for the frame rate, uh, just choose specifically depending on your internet. If you have a faster one, of course, you can go for high. And then once that's done, just click OK. And the next step is to just press Start. It will take slightly longer for it to connect to your PS4 if it's your first time. Now don't worry if the remote play window does not pop up immediately for you as it is normal if this is your first time doing remote play. As long as this pop up on the top left appeared on your PS4, then you are doing it right. Now for the final step, just take your controller and you should have noticed that it has disconnected. 
All you have to do is to just press the PlayStation button and the profile selection screen should pop up on your PS4 and instead of selecting the new profile, you can select back your main profile. After you've selected your main profile, go back to your controller and press the PS button one more time and your main profile should be locked in. And there you go, you are now able to play games with your main profile while remote play is running on your PC. Now a quick tip is to play by directly looking at your TV or wherever your PS4 is connected to as usual as the remote play on your PC will have a slight lag and delay, so do keep that in mind. Now since that you now know how to stream your PS4 gameplay to your PC, let's finally dive into Streamlabs OBS and it's time to bring it live to YouTube, Twitch and more. But before that, I just want to say that if you've learned something so far, do press the like and subscribe button so I'll know that you enjoy my videos and that will encourage me to make more just like this one. Alright guys, so now we are here at Streamlabs OBS and this is what you should see upon your first time visiting Streamlabs and if you haven't downloaded already, I would highly recommend you to, to download it first. I'll put the link into the description, so check that out. So for this particular video, I won't go too in-depth or too advanced into Streamlabs OBS so, because that would take another 10 minutes or so. So I'll just go through the basics and the bare essentials for you to set up your live streaming and I'll also provide you some recommended options in the settings to give your stream the maximum amount of quality as possible. So on the bottom left here we have scenes, we have sources and we have mixer. So scenes are basically what type of view you want your viewers to actually see and sources are what are actually included in them. I'll do a little bit more explanation and some example of my scenes and my resources later. So what you gotta do is first of all head over to sources, click on a plus sign button, head over to window capture, hit on that source. So for the name of the source you can just add anything you want, you can just type it uh, let's say PS4 remote play or you can just type it in anything you want. So now you add window, click on the slider button and go all the way down you should be able to see remote play.exe ps4 remote play this should actually be showing all of the application that's running and you want to choose remote play so after selecting remote play i would usually turn off the capture set uh, cursor as it could get in the way of the stream sometimes so press done and that's about it basically you just have to resize your ps4 screen in so once this is actually already done, uh, you will want to head over to the bottom left side at the settings button. Now these are some of the settings that I recommend for you to have the highest quality stream without taking too much resources from your internet. But of course, if your internet is stronger then your settings may vary. But I would recommend first of all is to untick confirm stream title and game before going live because this would actually be ticked by default. So um, let's move on to stream. So streaming service, so for services, uh, I would choose whatever streaming platform that you stream on. For me, it's YouTube, I mainly stream right there. And stream key. So this is extremely important. This is the main thing that you would want to pay attention to in your settings because this stream key will allow you to stream on whichever platform that you've chosen and it is very careful to not let other people see your stream key if other people know your stream key they'll be able to stream at your platform at your channel so be wary of that now let's move on to the output so for the output i would change the output from simple to advanced and now uh, you'll be using under streaming so under streaming for your encoder if you have a NVIDIA card, I would recommend choosing NVENC. Um, the new, actually any one of them will be fine. But if you have an AMD card, this would not be shown up. And instead, there will be some other options right here. So software, this is actually uh, basically running the stream through your your processor. Yeah. So you, you'll be able to choose whether you're going to run through your graphic card or your processor, that's up to you, depending on the performance you get out from it. 
So rate control, I will choose CBR. That's actually the best option. So for beat rate, I would highly recommend you to put around 2,500 if your internet is decent enough. But of course, you can go all the way to 3,000 or 3,500. But I would highly recommend you to stay away from 4,000 or 5,000 and above as that would actually take a lot of your upload speed. Unless your upload speed is, I don't know, it's around 200, 300 max. So basically for the preset quality, I would choose uh, either quality or max quality. So far, I'm okay with quality. And for the profile, I would just go with high. Now for the audio, um, I will just leave this as default as they, as they are. If you have an extra mic, so feel free to add them in. And okay, as for the video, so base canvas resolution is what your base monitor output is. So for my case, it's 1080. And for the output scale resolution, this is actually what your stream would actually show to your audience. So for the output, if you have a very, very, very powerful internet and with a very powerful upload speed, I would, I would maybe bump it up to 1080p, but that's sometimes pushing it a little bit too far. Most streamers actually stay at 1280 x 720p as that is actually good enough. For the downscale filter, I would highly recommend to change to Lenko's Sharpen Scaling 32 Samples. This is actually the best. And for the common SPS value, since I'm actually mainly streaming for PS4 games and most of them are actually kept at 30, so I'm fine with capping at 30. But of course, uh, some games actually runs on 60 FPS. So if you want to, you can change to 60 FPS. But do take in consideration that it takes more power. And that's actually about it for the entire settings. So those are the recommended settings that I recommend to you. So uh, let's go back to the scenes and sources. So basically, let's move on to the scenes. I'll just show you guys uh, how my stream looks like. So for my scene, I use more spells. Okay, let's load this up for a little while. Alright, so as you can see, underneath my my scenes, uh, my, basically my scene name is Komu Spell. And you can see there's a lot of scenes right here. There's starting soon, there's a live scene, there's an the inter intermission, there's the be right back, there's the desktop view. So basically these are what you want your viewers to see. So for example, the starting soon under sources, I actually have a countdown right here, wherever I want to go live. And I'll play some starting music as well. You can see the volume right here. Uh, so far I've muted, so it won't be so annoying. So here, the starting music, um, you can actually just download the MP4 and just link it right here. Uh, usually just press plus and then there's actually a media source here, right here. Or you can just link it to a YouTube video if that's what you want. There's a lot of things you can do with it. So for the live scene, so this is actually my live scene and you can actually see I've actually placed an overlay. There's a subscriber go up here and then there's a my name, there's the new donation, there's a new follower. There's a lot of uh, overlay that you can do with it. But of course, uh, I won't go too deep into it as this will drag the video too long. But if you're wondering where to get all these scenes, you can head over to the top left. There's a team button right here. Alright, and you can actually see there are multiple, multiple free teams right here. And installing them is actually really, really easy. And I'll just go through one example. Okay, so let's say if you want the animated type, uh, usually you will need the prime version of Streamlabs OBS, which is actually a payable version. But if you don't want to pay, there's also a static version, which is actually a free one. So let's say, for example, I like this Facebook gaming pure squares type of overlay. So what I do is I just click into this. Alright. So it's a really simple one. So let's say if I want to install it, I just click install overlay. Alright, and there we go. You'll be able to set up uh, however you want, just add your sources, you want to add your PS4 remote player right here, you want to add whatever widgets you have, you're gonna put an extra um, I don't know, an image of you, a webcam, it's totally up to you. And that's about it for Streamlab OBS. So now let's move on to how to connect your Streamlab OBS to your streaming software. So basically, I'm using YouTube as my main streaming software, so I'll use YouTube as an example. But it's roughly the same thing for Twitch, Mixer and the rest. 
Alright, so we're now at YouTube and in order to link your Streamlab OBS to YouTube, it's actually really simple. So you have to go all the way to the top right, click on your profile, head over to your YouTube studio. So once you're in your YouTube studio, head over to the other features at the bottom left side right here and click on live stream now. And this should bring you into the live stream control room. So these are where your control room where you can edit your title, when you can edit your description, you know, change what, uh, what category you're live streaming about. And here's the important part. These are your stream key. So this stream key has to be copy pasted into your Streamlab OBS's stream key here. So whatever stream key that is keyed into Streamlabs OBS, it will directly stream into that channel once you hit go live right here at the bottom right side. So yeah, this is actually why I mentioned that the stream key is extremely important to not share with anyone because anyone can actually live stream onto your channel. So yeah, so the next step is basically to copy this and to actually paste it into the stream key column right here and you're set to go. So in order to go live, all you have to do is to just press go live and you'll be on your way. And you should be able to see you live right here. The status right here will be live and that's about it. Now you know how to live stream from your PS4 to Streamlab OBS to any streaming platform that you need. So if you have any questions, do let me know down in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to reply every one of you guys. So don't be shy to ask questions. So um, I guess that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video.